large seats. We could go into the arguments about whether, he, whether or not to uh, steep them. Uh, I tend to steep seeds because the first thing that that broad beam does when you stick it in the ground is imbibe water to, to dilute the soup, the, the concentrated soup that's inside before it ever gets touched to it. And if you can soften that and pre-prepare it slightly, and in the case of sweet peas, there was a, a, a somebody came to me the other day and said, it seeds on the packet that you're not supposed to soak the seeds because they'll rot the plants. Well, it's all very relative. If you soak them for about 24 hours or 36 hours or forget them, and, uh, you may well have it. Um, I soaked beech grove seeds uh, on the 14th of February for three hours, and I started them in water that I could just touch with my hands. In fact, they were more than lukewarm, and left them in that same water, and they were through in 14 days. No problem at all, with pretty reasonable germination. So I, 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 want, I, I have the time to go find the bits of emery paper to scrape them and make sure I don't damage the coat. Uh, or, or, or indeed start chipping the bits off with an knife. Soaking has always worked, I have to say. But be sensible about it. And then, of course, you can, you can sow them singly, simply by popping them straight into the compost, which is in the cells, and you wouldn't need to touch them again until you plant them out. And these are broad beans. These are the variety of the sutton because they're for my own raised beds. Uh, broad bean, one of my fav most favourite. And then once they're down in there, get a bit of a shake, that one jumped out. Uh, I'm going to have to do this a second time. <laughs> um, I would then soak them with, a, with, with, a, with a, a watering can, and at this time of the year, the watering can, the water would have been pre warmed by sitting in the greenhouse, with a coarse rose on it, and force it down on top of these big seeds, just to make sure that, these, that, that, that the soil is all nicely firm and into the cold frame or into the cold greenhouses mine will go and, and, and wait for the broad beans. Slightly smaller seeds, I've got tomato here. Um, Phil, I, I, I work in this kind of size for personal use. You guys may be using a quarter tray, a quarter tray or a half tray or a full tray tray. I'll guarantee you'll finish up with far too many seedlings. When you start. But I would use that. So I, first of all, I dip it into the compost, I give it a shake, and then gently, with the tips of my fingers, I would uh, level it out, make it. Evenness of treatment is what is so important. If you treat them evenly and water them evenly and keep them in an even temperature, they will germinate evenly. Next stage of this process is to just add best thing I ever bought, little sieve, just to finish off the top so that it looks and is even in texture. And that then, you can use the Ponzi one that you buy in the Ferndale catalog, <laughs> or you can buy it, or you can have the little one that I, I could, I've got to use the Ponzi one because of the size of it. So I give it a little press, <laughs> give it a little press, and then we sow the seed. Well, tomato seeds are handleable individually. Um, if you've got an awful lot, now that's seed, I don't know what that costs, but there's one, two, three, four, there's about eight or nine seeds in the packet. You don't get a lot for your money nowadays. Um, I sow them by hand, and I tend to get them into the, that hollow in my hand there, and I just tap, 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 tap. And you should be able to see each individual seed at that size, so that you don't overcrowd them, give them plenty space. You can have this thing, which if you've got a steady hand and it's working properly, you, you pick the seeds up one at a time and drop them. Or you can have this, uh, this one here and you press it and you drop them. Or I've seen me sometimes just simply using a pair of tweezers and I just press the seeds onto the surface, spread them out, let me put that in for the next time. Spread them out and a little bit more compost on top. Can I ask you why you put the, why you said just a wee bit over the top? Because I'm sowing the seeds into a, the texture, the size of the seed. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? They match up. Mm -hmm. It becomes more important when we come to the next one, which is like dust. Um, so it stays in place. A bit fun. So that it stays. Yes. In place. Yes. Yes. Um, it's maybe a bit old-fashioned. 
It works. You do the cross section on you, so and it works. So then make sure that you cover the seed adequately. Tomatoes are a very good one for they come up sometimes and the and the and the two cotyledons haven't separated and the seed's still in the top because there hasn't been enough abrasion in pushing through to release this, the, the seed there. And that can sometimes contort the plant. So once it's done that, then there we go. A nice little press round. And then I stand these, oh, label. Stand these in a basin of water. Cobsa. In there. To take up water from underneath. In the old days, we used to actually make up the, the pots, water them, and then put that final layer on and so. And then when you squeeze down, the moisture came up. But with these composts, you're far better to do it by just taking it up. And you see when the surface darkens, that it's adequately wetted. Now we come to the next one, which is, of course, the uh, very small seed-like dust. And I have here a sample of um, Lobelia. So, Monsieur, if you've got the cold and you're going to sneeze, <laughs> you don't sneeze anywhere near the lobelia. Because petunia is another one, uh, you will probably realise. And, uh, you know, if you see that, if you haven't, if you haven't actually seen it, it really is, or, uh, in Scottish terms, it's like stew. Well, how do you know if you, when you've, when you've uh, uh, done all the business with the pot, and you've got it all ready, and you've got it, I better just do that, must have been put in time. Um, give it a shake. But that's not fine enough. Perforated it. That will give me a nice fine surface. Press down. Ready. And make sure that it's level too, so that it's not you know, can't be sure it's level. Then what I have here is some sand. Because I will take some sand through this fine sieve again, I'm getting myself in a muddle. Get some sand through this fine sieve and sieve it into this where the seeds are. Because when I sow, the seeds, I know the seeds are in there, and if I coat the top of the pot evenly, having mixed with the sand, I'm sure as, uh, as can be that the seeds themselves are being sown evenly. So that's the additional uh, point. Now where would, you, where would you germinate these seeds? Well, it depends on the facilities you've got. For most vegetable seeds, these things, the, the, the beans, uh, tomatoes so on the windowsill is fine. If you've got gold frame with a little uh, a, a bit of protection, uh, fine. If better, better still if you have a frame inside the greenhouse. You may have one of these, uh, uh, a seed tray with a lid. Excellent for the, for the job. It, 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 uh, it keeps the atmosphere quite uh, moist. Uh, there's no drafts and so on. And if, you've, uh, if you're well healed enough, you might even have one which can be plugged in to, to give what we call water heat. Uh, this heat that comes up through the compost will speed up the rate of germination of, of, of the seedlings. Um, if you have to do it out on a, a, a window cell, you still want to enclose the atmosphere and some people just use a poly bag. They'll stand that for inside a poly bag and sort of blow it up. I don't like it at all. It's just about too much moisture. And what I tend to do is I've got little sheets like that and I've got them quarter size that will go sit over the top uh, and uh, keep them out of bright sunshine uh, and um, shade if necessary if it's on a sunny window, shade it when it's bright and strong and then take that out, off every morning, turn it over because it'll be full of condensation, turn it over so you put the dry side down again and, uh, and, and as I say, bobs your uncle. Um, so that seasonal seed sowing, um, the more exotic the plants, the higher the temperatures the deep. If you're going to be sowing lobelias, petunias and begonias and things like that, you really do need the bottom heat to, 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 to push them on. And some places, at Beach Grove, we have a bench that's made up with uh, a, a cable in the bottom of the, at the bench. It's a closed case. And that, is, uh, that has a thermostat. 
and the temperature has turned up to around about 20, 21, or 70 if you haven't been metricated. Uh, uh, it's that, that sort of germination temperature, and that works a treat. Um, <coughs> is there any points that I should cover that I've muddled with all this stuff in front of me? What type of sand is it? What type of sand? What type of sand? This is it labelled horticultural sand. Um, it's, it's quite mixed. You can see actually it's the same stuff that you would put in a, a potting compost. There's some, there's some little pebbles in it. So you, you don't you want... Do no, no, it's too finely, it's too, it's too uh, even. And I think it can cause it to clog, the compost to clog really. You're better with different size. But for this purpose, you want the fine, the fines really, so that they are the same size more or less as the seed and it helps you to spread it out over the surface more and, evenly. And you're just kind of eyeballing for the amount of sand to, per Yes, per yes. Hand. I mean, if I had been doing this only once, is it, this is this only once, I would have poured a little bit of sand into the packet and just given it a, a shake. And then, uh, but I wanted to get them out to like, see the size. Another question, Jim. Some, some people um, advocate um, dark and covering with a, a light proof uh, lid or something to yeah, see but, to well, the Well, the, the point is that uh, um, the seeds need darkness, but I mean, I think they only actually need shade right. from bright sun. Okay. Um, there are some seeds that don't germinate in the light, in, in, in the dark, so yeah, yeah. they have to be left in the light. Uh -huh. uh, in, in fact, you don't cover them, you know, they're sort of thrown into the surface uh, of the compost. <coughs> but covering, uh, it's after all, you're only mimicking what happens out, outside. Yeah. You try to speed it up and you're in a controlled environment. 